with Christmas just around the corner, I thought that this would be a good time to share some of my top tips for helping you to prepare for a frugal Christmas. So I thought I would break this down and share with you some of my top 10 tips for actually preparing for a frugal Christmas. So I've got a lot to get through, so let's jump straight in. So number one is to start buying food and drink early. Now I'm not saying you get your turkey in November, but what I am saying is those things that can keep in the cupboard or you know, alcohol or you know soft drinks or your Christmas pudding or your biscuits, if you have space to get these now, then you can start spreading out the costs of your Christmas over the next sort of eight weeks of shopping rather than you know on Christmas Eve. Now there are some real benefits to this, it gives you a bit more time to shop around, so if you see some great deals in you know, your local supermarket, you can stop, stock up on those things now. You can also take advantage of any offers that are happening now, maybe if there's a particular tipple that you like to drink at Christmas time, it might be an offer before Christmas rather than in the build up. So if you have the space and you have somewhere to store it and you can do so without that temptation of those biscuits or that Christmas pudding sitting in the cupboard, then if start doing that shopping now. So number two is to get your presents as early as you can. Now you might have already started your Christmas shopping and that is fantastic, but maybe you are the sort of person that's still waiting for another payday because you're not quite ready to buy. Well that's fine, but it's definitely better to start shopping early because this means that you are not going to feel the pressure to buy whatever thing you can at whatever price you can because you are running out of time. It will also give you the chance to maybe wait and see what happens on things like Black Friday or Cyber Monday to see if there are any particular deals that you might be interested in then. It also gives you the time to shop around, to do your research, to look online and to get the best prices possible. It also means that you still got some time to wait for things to be delivered. So if there was a better price online, but it's got like a seven day delivery time, if you start now, then you've still got time to get them. Whereas if you're doing it on Christmas Eve, then you're probably have to gonna go into a shop and buy it at whatever price it is on the shelf. So number three is Cut the list. So we all have a list of people that we buy Christmas presents for. You know, you've probably got your mum, your dad, your kids, uh, you know, a few friends, uh, you know, some extended family members. But maybe this is the time where you actually look at removing people from that list. Now I'm not saying that you just completely cut them off and you just don't buy them a present, but instead I'm saying that maybe you can start having some conversations and working out who you want to buy for and who you don't want to buy for. And if there are still people that you want to buy for, maybe you could just have a conversation about ways that you could reduce those costs. Could you instead say reduce the amount that you spend on your siblings? You know, maybe you've all got kids now and it's actually getting quite expensive. So I did this with my sister and we now just get each other a fancy box of chocolates and be done with it rather than buying, you know, elaborate gifts from, you know, ourselves, our partners. And then we can just focus on the kids instead. Alternatively, maybe you just want to not buy presents for the kids. I don't know your own kids, but if you're buying for, you know, friends, kids, then maybe have a conversation. I recently did this with one of my good friends and we decided that the kids get loads of presents. So we're just going to buy gifts for each other instead. And this is actually going to save us a lot of money and we get something that we like, like a proper grown up present as well. So have a little think about your list, be creative about ways you can save money. Could you offer to do like a secret Santa amongst your friends or in your family so that you're only paying for one £10 gift rather than, you know, 10, £30 gifts. It's a huge saving to be made on that one. Number four is know your budget. So a few years ago, I created a list and it was literally just a list of everybody that I needed to buy presents for and how much I was going to spend on them. Now, obviously this has kind of changed, you know, inflation is a thing. So I've kind of upped the budget on these things too. It just provides a good solid budget. I know exactly what I can spend. I will look for the best prices so that I can get as much as possible for that person within their allocated budget. I do this around food too. So I'll make sure that I have a budget for my food shop. And you know, this is an addition to the normal weekly shop. So sometimes it gets a little bit boosted by some of the money from you know my normal weekly shopping but I have a fixed budget for how much I want to spend on food and I stick to that and that's the key set a budget that is realistic but affordable and make sure you stick to it you might want to do this in a spreadsheet or just have it like a you know on your notes app in your phone so you can keep track of it but make sure that you are staying well within the constraints of what is affordable and sensible for your financial situation 
Number five is to plan your Christmas food. Now you might be hosting Christmas this year and that means you've got to do, you know, turkey and the whole shebang. But make sure you only buy the food that you need. There can be a tendency to buy way too much food. And we do this in my family all the time. So we will have like a big Christmas lunch and then we'll do a Christmas dinner as well. And this is a whole load more food. And then we're just either eating that for the next few days or it gets thrown away. And that's just bad for the environment and bad for your wallet. So plan out your meals just like you would meal plan on a weekly basis. Plan out what food you're gonna have. If you're buying a full turkey, think about how you can freeze some of that, how you could use that for meals throughout the week. Think about the ways that you could use different parts of the Christmas meal in different ways. So if you've got leftover mashed potatoes, could you slice them up and do a cottage pie? Um, if you've got leftover veggies, could you make a soup or something like that? Think about how much food you're gonna have and how you can get the most from it without being wasteful. Another top tip here is if it's just gonna be you and maybe a couple of other people for Christmas dinner, you probably don't need to buy a full turkey. Okay, this is something I see a lot of people do, like they gotta have the turkey. Where actually, you could probably just get away with a normal sized chicken or just like a turkey crown or a turkey breast or something like that. So think about how much you actually need for your family and kind of don't overshop those things, particularly the expensive items like your turkey. Number six. Six. Number six is to recycle any, you know, Christmas gift bags or wrapping paper. Have a look through the drawer to see what wrapping paper you have left over. Have a look to see if you've got, you know, that fancy string stuff or bows or ribbons or cards. You can even use last year's Christmas cards to turn them into gift tags. Think about what you've already got. Not only is this a great solution for making sure that we're doing the best for the planet, but it's also good for your wallet too. Gift wrap is normally one of the things that we forget when we're budgeting. So actually, if we can find ways to recycle what we had last year, then that's a good solution too. You can also look into using things like fabrics or, you know, scarves or things like that. Make them part of the gifts that you are giving, but also then use them to wrap other things too. You can get really creative with this and there are some great websites that can show you fun ways to create gift wrap on a low budget. Number seven is DIY decorations. Now we've probably all got like a loft or you know a cupboard somewhere that's full of Christmas decorations. But what if you want something a little bit different? Well, thanks to Pinterest, we are literally, you know, there's no end of great ideas. And TikTok and Instagram are full of these too. Now you can get the kids involved in these. Could you make snowflakes for the windows? Could you make, you know, like snowmen or Christmas trees or you know anything else? You know, could you do some soldo to make some new decorations? Get the kids involved, make it a family event and see what you can create. Another great movement is the Hooga movement where they are bringing like the outdoors in. So can you find, you know, bits of trees or pine cones or things like that that you can bring into your house to make it feel a bit more festive without spending too much money? So number eight is to spend wisely on Black Friday. Now, I think there's no denying that there are some good deals that are available to you at that time of year, but you need to make sure that you're not just getting sucked into the hype. So when Black Friday comes around, make sure you have a decent shopping list, okay? You know what you are looking for. And be strict about that. Don't get drawn in, don't think, oh no, I'll, I'll just get this slightly more expensive one because that's on offer. If you weren't gonna spend that or you weren't gonna buy that item, don't buy it on Black Friday, okay? So make sure that you have a strict list, you know roughly the kind of prices that you want to spend. If it comes up in the Black Friday sale, then great. If it doesn't, move on. There is a good chance that these things are going to show up later down the line in some other sale anyway. Number nine, if you are shopping online, make sure that you are using cashback sites. We've got the likes of Quidco and Top Cashback and there are some other ones out there too. If you use these websites, make sure you just visit them to see if the website that you're shopping on offers some cashback. Now this doesn't really benefit you in the short term because it normally takes a few weeks for you to get that cashback come through but it could help in January where you got a nice little boost to your income. Maybe you could give yourself some little treat in January with the extra cash back that you have coming in, but it all helps. Maybe you could even use that to start your sinking fund for next year's Christmas. So actually you give yourself a head start on that. If you're doing any shopping online, no matter what time of year, I always recommend having a look at these cashback sites to see if there is something that could help put some money back in your pocket.
Number 10 is to spend your loyalty points. So the chances are you've got loyalty cards for all sorts of different places. And now is a great time to think about whether you should be using them to buy gifts or experiences or anything else you want, really. So I like to have a look at like my grocery shopping. I've got some loyalty cards for that, you know, my Tesco Club Club points. And perhaps I'll use those to pay for my Christmas shopping. Alternatively, I might use my loyalty points in exchange them for restaurant days out or something like this so that I can actually have a restaurant experience with some friends we can celebrate Christmas together. So look at the different loyalty points you have and how you can use them to help reduce the cost of your Christmas shopping and don't forget when you are doing your shopping to make sure that you're collecting those points too because you'll still get the benefit of that come January, come February when your points have all stacked up and maybe you know you still need to buy food or you still want to go out, you still want to do stuff. So make sure you continue to collect them over the Christmas period too. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. I'm wishing you a very frugal Christmas, but with lots of joy and merriment and, you know, none of the feeling of restriction. You can still have a great Christmas without spending beyond your means. Make sure you check out my other videos. I've got a whole load of videos. I've been doing this for a while now. I put out two videos a week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and comment below. What is the most expensive part of your Christmas? And I will see you in the next video. Bye.